So far, we've discussed Lewis structures and molecular orbital theory as ways of thinking about the structure of organic molecules. Today, we're going to bridge the gap between the two and look at resonance, the idea that a single compound or a single molecule can be represented by multiple Lewis structures that are, in a sense, equally valid representations of that molecule. So at its simplest, resonance refers to a situation in which multiple Lewis structures can be used to represent the same compound. Generally, we can map molecular orbitals fairly well onto the common structures in Lewis structures, including single bonds, double and triple bonds, and lone pairs. For instance, a lone pair, which is a filled orbital, is typically represented by an N molecular orbital. A double bond and triple bond are typically represented as pi molecular orbitals with side-on overlap of p orbitals residing on either sp or sp2 hybridized atoms. And sigma bonds, or single bonds, are represented by sigma type overlap and sigma bonding and sigma star antibonding orbitals. However, in some cases, it's not possible to map bonds and lone pairs from Lewis structures directly onto molecular orbitals. In these cases, resonance becomes important. When resonance is important, lone pairs and pi bonds in Lewis structures will not map cleanly onto the n, pi, and pi star orbitals that we've seen before. Here's an example of this phenomenon at work. So the compound that you see on the right of this slide is the enolate of acid aldehyde, C2H3O-. And while you might immediately recognize that this carbon is negatively charged, and that it possesses a lone pair right here in what appears to be an n orbital, what we can see is that there's actually another way to draw this exact Lewis structure with the same sigma framework, the atoms in the exact same positions, with the only change being a reorganization of the pi bonds and lone pairs. Here's a second way to draw the enolate of acid aldehyde, where now, instead of drawing the double bond between the carbon and oxygen, we've drawn the double bond between the carbon and carbon, and we've placed the lone pair on the oxygen. In this case, the oxygen now appears to possess an n orbital, and there appear to be pi and pi star orbitals between the two carbons. So the two Lewis structures appear to suggest two different sets of molecular orbitals. There's clearly something wrong here. Again, to refresh, no atoms have moved, and no sigma bonds have been broken or formed. These are two characteristics of resonance structures. Placing the two structures side by side, we can see that they have the same sigma framework, the same positions of atoms. They differ only in the placement of pi bonds and lone pairs. Let's go through and assign hybridization, or apparent hybridization, to the two atoms on the ends of this compound, the carbon and the oxygen. So in the left-hand molecule, the oxygen appears to have three electron pair domains. Thus, we would expect it to have sp2 hybridization. The carbon has four electron pair domains, two with bonds to the hydrogens, one containing the lone pair, and one containing the sigma bond to the other carbon. Thus, we would expect the carbon to have sp3 hybridization. In the other resonance structure, we see that the oxygen now has four electron pair domains around it. Thus, we would expect the oxygen to be sp3 hybridized. And the carbon now, with only three electron pair domains, we would expect to be sp2 hybridized. Believe it or not, the real situation is that both the oxygen and the carbon are sp2 hybridized. Why is this the case? Well, believe it or not, the lone pair that corresponds to the anionic center in the enolate of acid aldehyde prefers to be in a p orbital rather than an n orbital. Placing the lone pair in a p orbital allows us to imagine the molecular orbitals of the enolate as a three atom pi system. This pi system would be constructed from three 2p orbitals all parallel with one another and all three perpendicular to the molecular plane defined by the atoms of the enolate. We can also envision these molecular orbitals as arising from an n to pi star resonance interaction where a filled non-bonding orbital on either the terminal oxygen or the terminal carbon interacts with the unfilled pi star orbital 
either between the two carbons or between the central carbon and the oxygen. The result of this overlap is shown for you here in the molecular orbitals of acetaldehydes enolate. What you can notice is that the bottom two filled orbitals correspond rather nicely with the Lewis structures that we drew on the first couple of slides. This may give you the idea that the molecule is actually a rapidly equilibrating mixture of these two quote-unquote resonant structures. The truth is a little bit more complex in that the molecule possesses both of these molecular orbitals and even one more unfilled molecular orbital above these and is really a superposition of all three structures. So neither of these Lewis structures fully defines the molecular structure of the enolate. To depict resonance interactions, organic chemists use a convention called curved arrow notation in which the interactions between filled and empty orbitals are shown as the movement of electrons between pi bonds and lone pairs. To depict the interconversion of the enolate resonance structures, for instance, we would draw an arrow originating at the lone pair, going towards the bond to represent the formation of a new pi bond, and then to represent the breaking of the pi bond between the carbon and oxygen, we would draw a second arrow from that bond up to the oxygen. These curved arrows exemplify an n to pi star interaction because the pi bond is breaking and our electron source is a non-bonding orbital on the carbon atom. Between the two structures, we use a double-headed arrow to represent the fact that the two structures are related as resonance structures and that a chemical reaction is not, strictly speaking, occurring. As you can see, a set of curved arrows uniquely describes a filled empty orbital interaction, in this case the n to pi star interaction.